the origin and insertion of the gastrocnemius. Hi, I'm Hayley from Parallel Coaching and in this video we're going to understand the origin and insertion of the calf muscle, which is also called the gastrocnemius. We're going to understand where it is, we're going to understand how to learn the origins and insertions and we're going to relate this to your level 2 and 3 anatomy and physiology exam. Now as we go through today, there are three mock questions at the end of today's video I'd like you to test your knowledge using. All you need to do is scroll down on the blog and you'll be able to find those immediately. Or if you're not on our blog yet, click the link and you can join us there. Also, if you want to subscribe to our YouTube channel, just click the red button and you'll get notifications of more videos just like this, whereby we look at various areas of anatomy and physiology and fit pro knowledge. So let's go and find out more about why you need to know this and the other origins and surgeons you need to know. As a fit pro, it's really important that you understand about muscles. This isn't just to pass your level two or level three anatomy exam where you've got to know 35 muscles at level two and level three, you need to know 50 muscles. But those information of the origin and the insertion allows you to understand the action that that muscle does. If you understand the action of the muscle, you can now prescribe effective exercises for your client that relate to their goal and making sure that it's a well-rounded, balanced program for your client and this is all really important to make sure that you as a fit pro are showing up and delivering the best you possibly can with your clients so now we know how important it is let's find out more about the gastrocnemius now the gastrocnemius is the calf muscle this is at the back of our lower leg so you can put your hand on it it literally is at the back of the lower leg now we call this the back of is called the posterior in anatomical terms. So if you see the word posterior lower leg, it's talking about the back of the lower leg. We're talking about the calf or the gastrocnemius. Now this covers or crosses both the ankle and the knee. Now that's really important to know what joints are being crossed. As soon as you know what joints are being crossed, you now know that the joint action must relate to both of those joints. So we're expecting something for the ankle and something for the knee. We know it's on the posterior leg, so it's happening behind both the knee and the ankle. So what is the origin and insertion of the gastrocnemius? The origin is the lower condyles of the femur. So what I want you to imagine is that you've got these two condyles that sit at the bottom of your femur. Now your femur is basically your, your, your thigh bone, okay? So your long thigh bone. And at the bottom, you've got these kind of two knobbly con condyles. And these knobbly condyles sit inside the tibial plateau of our knee. So the condyles are actually where the knee joint happens. So it's the tibial plateau is the lower leg bone. And that's like this flat bit that the condyles of the femur sit on top of. Now, the origin of your gastrocnemius starts at those condyles. So it's literally just above the knee, pretty much around the knee joint itself. So if you literally put your hand on the inside of your knee now, so the back of your knee, and you can feel where that goes into that hinge joint, imagine that you've got these two condyles and that's where your gastrocnemius is actually or originating, so the origin point. Then it crosses the knee, then it crosses the ankle and it inserts at the calcaneus. Now the calcaneus is our heel bone and it does that via our Achilles tendon. So now you know that the origin is the condyles of the female and the insertion is the calcaneus. So now we know the origin and insertion, we need to know the action associated with that muscle. Now the action here is going to include the plantar flexion of the ankle, which is the main one. So if you think about drawing the origin and insertion closer towards each other, it will create a pointing of your toes. So literally, if you point your toes now, that's plantar flexion, whereby you're pushing your toes away from your nose. So in that plantar flexion position, you're activating your gastrocnemius or you're working it. But also the gastrocnemius will contribute towards knee flexion because, like I said a moment ago, its origin is actually above the knee joint. So they're going to be our two main joint actions, plantar flexion of the ankle and knee flexion. So now we have those two joint actions, we can then think about exercises that use those same two joint actions. And they might just use one of those actions or they might use both. So a calf raise is the first one to think about. And this is going to be, could be standing, it could be seated. Uh, it could even be um, a bent over like donkey kick position whereby you're lifting the hips. Either way, a calf raise would definitely work plantar flexion. We also have things like step ups, lunges, walking, running, cycling, all of these work the gastrocnemius whereby we're moving at the ankle um, and at times even behind the knee. Now, as part of this, we can understand 
that to get the most uh, movement out of our gastrocnemius, we want to make sure that we're working through full length. So let's have a look at the difference between doing a calf raise with a flexed knee, so a bent knee, or with an extended knee. And this is a really key differentiation. So to get more gastrocnemius activation, we want to choose exercises that have the knee in extension. Now, this is really different to having it in flexion, and that's because we're elongating it the most length it could possibly have. So first of all, find your origin and your insertion and just touch those with your hand for your gastrocnemius. Then in a seated position, so with your knees out in front, literally point your toes so that you're doing a calf raise. And these seated calf raise machines do exist, or you put like a plate over your legs as you do it. But here, you're actually never getting to full range of the, the gastrocnemius because the knee is bent. If I stand and do a calf raise, I now get full range because my gastrocnemius can go through full length and then full contraction. So that's the main thing to think about is when you're looking at it, have a elongated or an extended position in the knee would get more recruitment of your gastrocnemius. Outside of that, it will also get the soleus. So another video to help you learn your origins and insertions have already been created and I've done this in five easy steps for you. So all you need to do is click the link and you'll be able to go straight to that other video and you can learn how to really break down learning these origins and insertions just like we've done now. So you can think about the actions and the exercises, you can think about which muscle is working in what plane of movement and what action in particular. Now, in order to do this inside that video, I actually share with you the muscle memory flashcards and how you can use these flashcards to help memorize all of this information. All you need to do is click the link and you'll find out much more about those and how they will be able to help you learn all 50 muscles for level three anatomy and 35 muscles for your level two anatomy. And that will basically outline everything so that you can learn it with simplicity and structure without getting overwhelmed about all the information. So outside of that, there are three mock questions to test your knowledge on today's content. All you need to do is to go and find those mock questions at the bottom of the blog and answer them. I'd also love to know what your big takeaway has been from today's session. So drop a little comment below and let me know if this has been helpful. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you on the next video. Take care.